The Raiders certainly have a long, proud, storied tradition in the past. And throughout their history, they also have a history of loud, dramatic shenanigans going on. Al Davis's beef with Pete Rozelle in the NFL. Al Davis's beef with Marcus Allen. You could go on and on. Firing Lane Kiffin with cause. A lot of it ties back to Al Davis. He's a bit of a fucking drama king. He was. Rust his soul. Freaking legend that he was. But damn, oh damn, I don't know if it was the Vegas air or what the fuck it was, but there certainly was a lot of drama on the strip for the Las Vegas Raiders in 2021, wasn't there? You had the whole John Gruden saga. And you had some people saying, what, you're going to fire him for emails that he sent like a decade ago? Which misses the entire fucking point. I mean, they had to. You can't be the Raiders and sit there and allow him to continue to coach games. Like, that's just ridiculous. The fact that they even let him coach one more game after the shit started coming out was ridiculous in and of itself. And if you're in the position of Raiders ownership, Raiders brass, you wouldn't have kept John Gruden around either. There's too little reward, way too much risk associated with it. Period. Come on, let's be realistic. But it wasn't just John Gruden wanting to be a racist and a homophobe in some emails. You had the Henry, Henry Ruggs III freaking fatal accident and the arrest and the release. And that's just such an unfortunate thing. But the fuck are you doing at that time of night driving that damn fast? A poor woman and her dog both died because of it. Like, how fucking stupid can you be? And it's sometimes with these players, no matter how much homework you do on them, no matter how good you think they might be from a character standpoint, some of these guys get some of the notoriety and star shine of being an NFL player, and they can't fucking handle it. Whether you say, well, he's drunk or this or that. Well, couldn't fucking handle that either. Is a fucking shame because you're looking at a guy that this organization just recently took in the first round. They were counting on, was starting to kind of come into his own a little bit, and now he's gone from the damn league. And then you add the whole Damon Arnett shit, like what in the fuck is this douchebaggery that he's doing on his social media? It's just dumb. Like you would think for people in that type of spot, that you would sit there and say, you know what? I probably shouldn't do this. Henry Ruggs III, John Gruden, Damon Arnett. What the fuck are you guys thinking? And you look at Ruggs III and Arnett. Those are guys that this team had spent a first round pick on. And like all this talk over the past few years about who won the Khalil Mack trade. The Chicago Bears or the frickin' Oakland, now Las Vegas Raiders? The answer is, four years later, nobody did. Khalil Mack's not even in Chicago anymore. Where have the Raiders been since then? Nobody won that damn deal. You look at all the draft picks they got for dealing away Khalil Mack, dealing away Amari Cooper. And what the fuck does this team really have to show for? it? And that's the shit that interim head coach Rich Passaccia ultimately inherited and had to deal with and somehow had to figure out a way from keeping this team from completely and totally imploding. Keeping this team focused with their eyes on the prize. Keep this team competitive. Keep them playing hard. And he did. Like, to his credit. May not have meant much in the grand scheme of things in terms of the Las Vegas Raiders, but it's got to mean something for him down the road. He kept this team together. And you got to week 18 where as long as the Raiders didn't lose in their matchup against the Chargers, they were going to make the playoffs. Either a win or a tie. Like, if I had told you before the season that, hey, John Gruden's going to get fired during the season, Henry Ruggs is going to get released, Damon Arnett's going to get released, you'd be like, oh my God, this team's going to be picking in the top five. And instead, the last week of the season, they got a chance at the playoffs. And they made it! You know, beating the Chargers in OT, they make the playoffs. And they stuck a game to the eventual AFC Conference champion Cincinnati Bengals in the wildcard round before losing 26-19. to 
You had Derek Carr throw for over 4,800 yards. Hunter Renfro had a breakthrough 1,000-yard receiving campaign. Colton Miller really shown himself to be a top-notch left tackle in the league. He absolutely has, which as grisly as he was as a rookie a few years ago is just a tremendous amount of development that he's underwent. Um, but that defense being a mixed bag was still one of those things where it still didn't hurt him enough to where they couldn't make the playoffs. They're 14th of total yards allowed, 26 of total points allowed. But here's the deal. Like general manager Mike Mayock showed that he wasn't competent in his job and he needed to go. Unfortunately for interim head coach Rick Passaccia, if Mayock's going to go, then you're going to go too. And it's really hard to sit there and have the courage to stick with the guy, even though you say, what more was he really supposed to do? And yeah, sometimes the situation just sucks. And it demands a change that is out of your hands, and you got to deal with it the best you can. Like, Masaccia absolutely deserved, in some ways, to have the head coaching job with the Raiders. But if you're in a position of power, would you really feel confident about that? I mean, like, you got to ask yourself those questions. So I get it. Dave Ziegler was brought in from the New England Patriots to be the team's new general manager, and he brought with him Josh McDaniels, the Patriots' offensive coordinator, to be the new head coach. We'll see with Ziegler. Like, the good thing about the front office executives for the Patriots, their history isn't quite as bad as the Belichick branches of the coaching tree. But I'll say this about Josh McDaniels. We'll see if this works out. But at some point in time, he was going to get a second opportunity. And we could keep talking about how bad he was at Denver, but that was also over a decade ago. It doesn't mean he's totally and completely changed as a person, but I can guarantee he certainly learned quite a bit from that experience. Just saying. The Raiders now go into this offseason, new general manager, new head coach. You just had the Denver Broncos bring in Russell Wilson. You've got almost $30 million in cap space. Time to go to work on that offense, because you're going to need offense in that damn division. You need a right tackle because God knows you played Alex Leatherwood at right tackle for a time in 2021, and he was absolutely terrible. Got to hope to God he can stick at right guard. But you can't roll with a, a Leatherwood or Brandon Parker at right tackle anymore. You got to have somebody more confident, more on the level of a Colton Miller who's on the left side. Then, unfortunately, you're going to have to replace Henry Ruggs, and you got to get some more speed and talent at the wide receiver position. Hunter Renfro is really nice. You can't just let rest on that. That can't be all you have. You need more of a presence like a center in the middle of that offensive line. You could use a left guard too. Like the Raiders need multiple players on that offensive line and they should invest early and often in that spot in the draft. Defensively, they could use some speed specifically in the secondary and specifically on the edge. Um, but the real deal here is this, is that you brought in Josh McDaniels. You've got an offensive-minded guy in charge. You have to get as much as you can out of Derek Carr, which means you got to put more weapons around him. And the fact that he threw for 4,800 yards, losing rugs during the season, and you look at the rest of the receiving core, you're counting on guys like Zay Jones and Brian Edwards. And I mean, that's not exactly anything to write home about. Darren Waller was nice, but you could argue he had a bit of a down year. Um, you need to make it a little easier for him. You're going to have to bang with some big-time offenses potentially in that division now.